Hi, this video is about how to make Metal Gear whatever logo if you want. Uh, Tutbid did one a few years ago uh, for Photoshop. This one's different, uh, maybe a little easier, and it's for GIMP. Yeah, I'm using 2.8 in case it looks a little bit different than the version you've got, but as long as you get polar coordinates, it should work. Okay, so this is how you do it. So it's file, new file. Okay, and since you're going to be using polar coordinates, okay, and a brush. Okay, you got to have layers that divide, you know, that can be divided by 50. Okay, or that 50 will divide into. So a thousand by a thousand is the one I'm going to use. Okay, there you go. And shut the other one off. Now, that's the brush that you're going to need. If you, it's in another one of my videos. It's how to make gears from a brush and polar coordinates. This is part one. Okay, and quickly, this is a 200 by 800 image. It got scaled to 50 wide and 150 high. These were set at 40 and 20 from the edges, okay, and one in the middle. So if you just copy it all the way around and keep a grid spacing in 20, you can make it. Okay? Enough said. Okay, I'm going to make a few layers. I just hit enter. There. One more. Plenty. Okay, and we'll put a gradient in the back here of uh, something that I'm not too bad. Ah, web color. There you go. Okay. So, first thing, need the brush. So it's brush which is 150 wide, 150 high. Okay. Doesn't matter what color. Okay. You need to catch the edge. Okay, and that's typical for anything that you use for this type of affair. You got to go across the entire layer for polar. Okay. Now, next one's rectangular selection tool, and we'll just change layers and make him ah, about that size, within reason. You'll see why in a sec. So, bucket fill tool, fill him in. Okay, same layer. Selection is none, and we'll just make a small band. It's just separator. And selection is done. Okay, so I'm going to go on this next layer and we're going to do some cutouts. Now, everybody should have this stuff. I mean, it's pretty simple. Okay, it's kind of an oval, fuzzy one. Okay, grab the brush, and put it back to its default sizes. Okay, which should work across the layer, except change your angle to 90. Okay, unless you've actually got an oval that's the other way around. Hit enter. Thank you. Okay, so you're on the third layer. You go click, shift, control to keep it straight. You won't see it. Of it. Okay, you might see it here. But you just go alpha to selection. Okay. And of course, control Z and control Z and Z one more time. Change this to 200. Sorry. And we'll try this again. That's better. Okay. We're on that layer. You're going to go alpha to selection. They show up. Okay. Roughly but what you need to do. Hit the delete key. Go up to the layer that you actually want to chop holes out of. And hit the delete key again and selection none. And the reason I'm saying hit the delete key twice is because you're going to be using another one on the same layer. I mean, unless you want to do a different layer. Change this guy back to its original zero. Okay. It's got to be at 200 as well. It means it gives an extra space. 100 would be just binding across, 10 just overlapped everybody. Okay. So click, shifting control, and we go across. Alpha to selection. Delete key, delete key, and selection is none. Okay. Now, the other, I'll show you what happens actually. It may not happen to you, but it happens to me a lot. That gets left over. If you want to use it, be my guest. I mean, it's whatever you want to do. Uh, I just, I usually just trash that layer. Okay. So that's it. Basically, that's all there is to it. I'm going to zoom in. You may or may not get get that off of there. What's called anti-aliasing lines. It's, I don't know. It could be a 64-bit machine. It could be because of GIMP, or it could be I'm just holding my nose wrong. This does not always happen. It may never happen to you. Uh, in this case, we'll just leave it in. If it so, 
if it doesn't happen to you, you won't get something that you'll see in a second. Okay? You can turn these independent of each other, but I usually just merge them together. So I'll merge down. All right? Filters, distortions, polar coordinates. Okay? By default, it comes mapped to the top. Take that off. Okay? So just two polar. That's it. It's turned around. It's rather unremarkable. It doesn't look like much. Okay? But here's where it gets interesting. Alpha to selection. Okay? And it's actually pretty simple. Now, my system seems to start to want to crash every time I do this, so kind of bear with me if you lose my voice or whatever. So it's gradient, and I'm going to use I think Cold Steel 2, okay, or anything similar will work, okay. It's going to be radial and no repeat. So I'm basically just going to start in the middle here. This should be really interesting. And there we go. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have like a dark line in here, you know, when it gets offset. Uh, I mean, you can if you want, but it tends to not work out very well. So, I'm not going to do what the very first one is because it's too taxing on my machine, but if you want to do it, I'll show you how to do it with the GIMP part. Okay? So, we're just going to go selection. Selection, come on, none. Good, it's off. My machine isn't screwing up as bad. Okay, it doesn't look like much. Okay, we're still on that layer. So we're going to go filters, map, bump map. Okay, and I would name this guy, but I know what it is. It's layer 5. Okay, I'll bring it in here just to give you an idea. And depth, I usually pump it up a bit. Okay, use your own discretion. Uh, elevation, I usually kind of pump it down a little bit to give it a little more oomph. Okay, and as you see, those lines that I pointed out are really showing up now. Okay, and if you don't get them, you can put them in. Okay, you I mean, got to do it in a brush, obviously. I'll just leave it like that. Asthmus should be probably okay. Everything else is zero. So, you've punched up a bit. Okay, and it's actually giving you divisions. By the way, brush closer in gives you different widths. Okay, so now we're going to go on another layer, and I'm going to pick something that's big. Uh, Book somebody. There we go. Book went old. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Pump them up to about 180. And let's go inside and we're just going to type GIMP. And then just move them into the middle here. Alpha to selection. And it's the same deal. Pick the same gradient except change it to linear. Go across and go up. There you go. What you want to avoid is having kind of weird lines coming across here. You don't want to get ridges. You can if you want. It's up to you. But it won't look very good. So this time I'm going to go filters. And I'm going to go down to noise and go hurl. Okay. I'm going to keep it at 50. Okay. Play with it. Okay, and then selection is none. Okay, it says GIMP, so I don't got to name it. I go back to filters and map and bump map, and I'm simply going to use well, I mean, you can use the gear part if you want, but look rather odd. And we'll take the elevation down a little bit. As in this, yeah, I'm going to change a bit too much. Okay, in depth. There. Alright, that's it. That's basically all there is to it. So, I'm just going to merge these guys down because it's just easier to put a drop shadow on. And something to keep of note, if you've done the, you know, the noise part with the hurl, or, well, there's other names for it, but anyway, uh, 
if you've done that with hurl which kind of puts holes in your object and you go alpha to selection and then go filter okay light and shadow and drop shadow and just come up in the back so if it's highlighted and you do this you'll get a different effect okay from the, now I'm not going to do it because I'm going to crash my system as you can see it's doing all kinds of weird things there you go you now have one shiny metal gear kind of looks like paint and a shiny gimp yeah, you can play with it all you want add lights and shadows which just gets too long a video hopefully this helps somebody out have fun